All righty then. Welcome back, friends and neighbors. Meanwhile, back on the ranch, slash farm, slash sleeping range, slash fun place to be. Uh, this little edge of the episode, continuing saga of the custom built John Beanland Custom 7 Remington Short Action Ultra Mag. Heavy duty, baby. Um, <clears throat> in case any of you are wondering, this rifle weighs in with this Sidewinder muzzle brake on straight up 15 pounds. I guess they got a mighty Brad that's a heavy rifle. How are you going to tote that around the woods looking for something? I ain't. <laughs> this puppy comes out of the truck, out of the box, goes on the shooting bench, does this thing, goes back in the box. Okay, if I'm after pigs, I'll be set up in the spot. I won't be tooling around the damn woods with this thing. You can bet your butt on that. To go for it. Purpose of the video today, like I said, I built this weapon to be heavy. That's why it's got that huge barrel on it. I want a very little recoil. Now, I did a little quick shot down at the 350-yard uh, steel plate. And you can see the muzzle on this thing just barely moves. In fact, looking through that Vortex scope, I never lose sight of the target. It's just like shooting my Ruger Precision 243. I have instant feedback. This thing don't bounce around. It don't beat you up at all. Now, with the break off of there, it feels like maybe a 308 maybe it's just a hot 243 something i mean not bad at all i'm loving it what we're going to do today for those of you that are curious on this seven remington short action ultra mag cartridge this is the ammo that we're using i've got the last 14 rounds a loaded 50 just for barrel break in zero things like that what we're going to do today is do a little test to see what kind of point of impact shift we get, if any, between the break and the use of the suppressor. Now, on guns with whippy barrels, it makes a difference. Even on guns with nice, long, stiff barrels like my Ruger Precision, when I put the suppressor on there, I have to adjust a couple inches. I have to put some internal adjustments in. I don't know if I'll have to do it on this one because frankly that Krieger barrel being 1.25 inches at the back and 0.95 at the front, I don't think it's going to get a lot of bend in it. Any shift is just going to come from the difference in the isotonic vibration wave going through the barrel. That's about all it's going to come, but we're going to find out. So. As I said before, this is not accuracy grade ammo. We're going to put the camera down there so we can see the hits on the target in real time. And what we have to understand is this ammunition, I just threw it together to burn. Powder charges were just metered. They weren't trickled. Bullets are 139 grain spire point. They're seated all the way down at the very top of the cannula or the crimpering sitting way the hell and far and going back off of the lands, I don't expect to see awesome accuracy out of this ammunition. But we will possibly expect to see a difference, a shift in point of impact between the two devices that we put on here. And that's what we're kind of looking at today. And this is another test that I'll do again once I start tracking the node, setting the load, and get this thing dialed in to where I want it with the load that it likes the best. But for right now, we're just kind of doing this to kind of see what we can expect. Get a kind of a, you know, a little bit of a, you know, advanced notice. So without further ado, we're going to take these big old bad boys, zing them down there. We're going to repost the camera so you can see the target. We are shooting at 101 yards. And that's about the minimal you want to use when you're checking for something like this at 50 yards. You might not see much difference, but 100 yards, you should be able to see any if there's going to be any. So stay tuned. Let me set that up. Let me move the camera. We'll be right back at it, and we'll make some noise. <laughs> okay. Got our target board set up. Got our camera down here. Like I said, we're at 101 yards from the shooting platform. 
We're going to head and zoom this puppy up. The first six rounds you hear, we're going to fire with the brake. That area 419 Sidewinder. Second six are going to be through the suppressor. And we're going to fire all rounds using the exact same point of impact. The red bullseye on the top target. Let's see what we can find out. Stay tuned. All right, I think we demonstrated something and I, I think I'm fairly satisfied with the result. Now, me and my fancy dancy little all natural pointer here, let me point some stuff out to you. 
Those of you watching as the holes occurred, as the shots were fired and the strings were run, remember this was the first string. This string was six shots fired with the Area 419 muzzle brake sidewinder. Now, I know that I said that this ammunition was not loaded for accuracy. It was just loaded to burn, and that is the truth. But I tell you what, I'm pleasantly surprised with the accuracy out of the gun of ammunition that's literally ammunition that could be fired through any seven rim SOM weapon, regardless of manufacturer, because it is at or just a tad below SAMI spec. And the powder charges, just meter thrown, no trickle, with 4831HC, and thrown at a level where even if I got an extra two or three or five or six tenths of a grain, it wasn't going to take it above max and therefore be unsafe. So there's a lot of leeway, a lot of wiggle room in here. We're firing at 100 yards. And these two holes right here, I knew they were bad when I pulled the trigger because I felt it. But that right there is four rounds, and I guarantee you can cover them as the edge with a 10-cent piece. Man, can you imagine what this what this rifle and this setup is going to do once I get that load and that node chased down and set? Oh my God, I'm going to have so much fun with this. Now, the second six were fired with the suppressor on, and we see about a two and a half inch shift center to center from here to here. Almost three inches, maybe. I'm loving it. Now these two, again, they were flyers. I knew they were when I pulled the trigger. This is four rounds. One up here on the edge that I let go as I was breathing, but the other three with the dot perfectly still. And that's three rounds. It's clover leaf and it's less than a dime. So like I said, not shooting for accuracy, just trying to demonstrate what we're going to see and do a little test to uh, determine what the differences are going to be when I'm shooting with the brake or with the suppressor. And now I know I'll go home and measure these and I will put down in my, in my little journal, in my data book, what the difference is gonna be. I can set those clicks and make those adjustments right on the fly if I need to. You notice everything is tending to the right. So I'm not too worried about that. That's, that was the last of the ammunition that was loaded. Everything I test now is going to be going to a different spot. I might go ahead and throw a couple of clicks in here just to move it over. Call it good, but I ain't going to be shooting it at anything other than paper. So, all in all, got a pretty good takeaway from this. Even ammunition that's loaded basically to Winchester white box 9mm target range ammo, plink and stuff shoots damn good out of this weapon four rounds three rounds clover release baby and i'm just shooting off the tailgate of the truck got my bag up there and it's a wobbling around when i get ready to test for accuracy loads i will be firing from a big old concrete bench and ain't nothing going to be moving and i am going to be having a whole lot of fun when i do it now I don't know if I mentioned to you guys, um, this rifle weighs in at an absolute 15 pounds, and let me tell you, it's a pleasure to shoot, and that's why I had him make it. That's why I bought that heavy barrel. That's why I wanted to do it that way. I just fired 12 rounds out of a weapon that most of your factory guns, you're going to say, okay, that's enough. I'm ready for more, baby. I am ready for more. John, kudos, my friend, kudos. You build one heck of a fine weapon. And stay tuned. Be looking for more stuff in the coming series on this. We're going to take this baby plumb through its courses and all the way to the end. And hopefully, in a few short weeks or months, we might be sitting here looking at a video where I set that puppy up and do some awesome stuff with it. Once again, folks, thanks for stopping by. Drop a comment in that section if you want to. 
Let me know what you're thinking, how you're feeling. Let me know if you've had similar stuff. Hope to see you some more. I'll be bringing you some more here on the continuing saga of, uh, for lack of a better term, the beast, because it is one heavy beast. <laughs> it's kind of like me. It's hard to move. All right. See y'all later. Stay tuned. More to come. Have a great day. Bye. Hey, y'all. <laughs> um, I came out to shoot a couple of still photographs for the video, and the wind was just so calm. And, you know, that ammo I've got loaded just for barrel breaking and stuff? Well, you know, I did zero the scope. And I thought, even though this ammunition isn't set up for accuracy at all, it was loaded just to burn. I got a 350-yard plate down there. We ought to throw a few at it just to see what it'll do. Let's give it a try. What do you say? Now I have absolutely no dope, no ballistic data, no cards, I'm just playing, but I'm using estimated dope that I would use if I was running my 243, so let's see what happens. Now that's not AR-500 plate down there, it's just a big old 16 inch mild steel, but with no wind like this, you ought to hear it if you hit it. I think that went right under it. going over so yeah it's just you know an experiment but we got to burn these rounds anyway so there we go <laughs> yeah, just a little high that's where I was running that's all right I found you now Sometimes it takes a couple. Whack. Man, I swear, that's right in the same spot. Probably running just a little to the right. There we go. Getting closer to center now. Heck yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, John. You build a gun. You build a gun, baby. Flank. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you couldn't see them anyway, but you could hear them. That's what it was all about. I'm loving it. Man, once I get a load dialed in for this, start chasing that node and find that load. Woo-wee. 350's a chip shot compared to what this puppy will do. All right. Let's get back on the hill and make some phone calls.